This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Citrix GoToAssist, the number one global market leader in remote support. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today we are checking out more Wireshark, specifically understanding protocols and the OSI model. Now, if you're still wondering why the heck one would use Wireshark, now is the time to pay attention. We're having some fun with packet sniffing and analysis, but what is that? First of all, packet sniffing. That's pretty self-descriptive, right? You're digging under the applications on your computer, your network, you're looking through the packets that are flowing along your connection, you're analyzing these packets, and that'll help you determine if there's any kind of problem with the network that you're on. You can check to see if someone is on your network who shouldn't be, you could figure out what traffic is making you hit your data cap, for example, or you could find out if some malicious, some crazy malicious thing is going on. Now, Wireshark supports a whole bunch of protocols when you want to analyze data, such as TCP, ARP, HTTP, DNS, UDP, and so many more. There's tons. Now, when capturing all this data, Wireshark makes you go into something called promiscuous mode. It's kind of like chilling in a dark corner of a coffee shop and overhearing all the different conversations around you. They aren't necessarily directed towards you, but since you're in proximity, you can still hear what people are talking about. It's the same with Wireshark. It's in promiscuous mode and it's sniffing. It's listening to everything around it, even if that info isn't directed at you, at your computer with your Wireshark. Now, if you've ever seen this thing called the OSI model, let's do a graph of the OSI model. It'll give you a really good idea of how this information in a computer is transferred and how it's actually seen by an end user. So the OSI model has seven different layers to it, starting with applications at the very, very top. Now this is what mom sees when she logs into her operating system, for example. She just sees the graphical user interface. Oh, it's so pretty. Now presentation is next, and this shows the computer data in a way that the application can understand, such as a JPEG or an MP3 or something like that. Now third down, this is where you find session. Session is going to manage the connection between two hosted computers, and it makes sure that your connection doesn't stop suddenly. Transport is the fourth down, and this is where TCP and UDP lives, all those different protocols, and it manages traffic between point A and point B to make sure that data gets transferred error-free. So everything you send back and forth is supposed to go just fine. Those are the protocols. Now this is where things like proxy servers and firewalls live as well. And then there is network which is where routers live. The network layer makes sure that the routing of data between two physical points is also correct. Sixth down is data link, and this operates using MAC addresses, bridges, and more to identify physical servers. And lastly, at the very, very bottom is physical. And this is the actual hardware that data is transferred through. Now, by understanding that there's all the different protocols and how they work on different OSI layers, it'll help you figure out how to fix problems on your network. So we have the application layer. This is HTTP, SMTP, FTP, Telnet. Then there's presentation, that's ASCII, JPEGs, MP3s. You can also have MPEGs there. Session would include things like NetBIOS and SAP. Transport, again, that's TCP, UDP, things of that nature. Network is going to be IP, so your internet protocols. Data link is gonna be like the ethernet, and physical, if you're using ethernet, that would be your Cat5 cable. Now each layer sits on top of another to ensure proper delivery of data from one place to another. And if any of these layers basically fail, you then end up with any kind of errors, and it can be anywhere in any of those layers. By understanding that I can't browse the internet, if there is any sort of IP error, I know that my network layer is at fault. If I know that everything works correctly on my end and someone else isn't receiving my information, I know it is a problem with one of their OSI layers and we can fix that problem. This is why we have Pretty Pretty Wireshark. This helps us determine which protocol is failing, what layer, and be able to fix it. Now after the break, I'll show you how to find the layers in Wireshark for your capture. With GoToAssist Remote Support, you can provide live and unattended remote support to any computer or mobile device. You can screen share with employees to diagnose and fix their problems faster. 
and more effectively. And you can use GoToAssist apps to deliver support anytime, anywhere, from your iPhone, your iPad, or even your Android device. GoToAssist is easy to use, and it sets up in less than a minute. Whether you're supporting one coworker, 10 employees, or even a thousand, I love GoToAssist. I've used it over here at the Hack Shop for tech support with my coworkers, and you can too. You can sign up today for a 30-day free trial, and you can support Hacktip at the same time. No contract, no credit card needed. Visit GoToAssist.com and click on the Try It Free button right now. And after your free trial, if you purchase GoToAssist before October 31st, use the promo code GoToAssist3030 to receive 30% off the standard monthly rate. That's 30% off with GoToAssist by Citrix, and we thank them for their support of Hacktip. We're back with understanding OSI model layers. Now that we understand OSI model layers and which each one includes, let's go ahead and take a look at Wireshark. Now, I've already done a little packet capture here on my Wi-Fi with some really quick internet browsing. So nothing really special. We probably won't find anything super interesting, but hey, it's a nice example. Now everything is working correctly, so no OSI layers are erroring out. If you want to take a look at the layers in Wireshark though, there is a way. You can go to statistics up at the top and you're going to see this little thing called protocol hierarchy. So click on that and you'll see this nice little layout of all these different protocols. So I have ethernet in here, internet protocol, uh, data, NetBIOS, and I can go ahead and open up all of these. Bam, look at them, there's so many. There you go, I think that's about enough. So this whole list is going to give you statistics based on the packets and the bytes transferred at each and every different stage of the capture. First of all, if I go to the top, I have protocols. Protocols are divided by different type. You can start with the frame, which is going to be your physical layer, and then you can go down to ethernet, and this is gonna be the data link layer. That's interesting. Hmm, I see OSI, isn't that crazy? Now from here, you can drop down the internet protocol on the network layer, and then I'll have something like, let's see, here's TCP down here. So that's going to be on the transport layer. And under there, we have SSL and HTTP on the application layer. So SSL is right here, that would be session and if I scroll down a little bit more yeah there's SSL there's HTTP the hypertext transfer protocol so that ends up being at the application letter layer BAM so now you know exactly how your network is set up in the form of layers and Wireshark makes it all super super easy to understand where all these are mine completely blown I love this whole OSI model thing I think it's awesome and it totally makes sense once you actually start messing with it I love this. Now send me your answers and let me know what you think. You can comment below, you can email us over at tips at hack5.org or you could just tweet me at snubs, I'm, I'm on Twitter too. Now be sure to check out our sister show Hack5 for more great stuff just like this and I'll be over there totally geeking out with Wireshark, reminding you to trust your technolust.